him. It's my privilege to have the role as service leader this morning. I'll be joined and certainly upstaged by our minister, Reverend Rosemary Morrison. Uh, we hope you well. We hope you feel welcome here today. This is, of course, the first Sunday after Earth Day, and so it's a good time to review the three R's. The first, most important, is to reduce consumption of products that place heavy energy and emission demands on our planet. The second is to reuse, and oh, jeez. <laughs> All right. Yay. <laughs> Next Sunday, this church will be full of tables for you to bring all those wonderful things you've been hoarding for the last two years or more. I welcome volunteers to help up, help set up for the two weeks, the running of the garage sale and the cleaning up, which is May 13th and 14th and details will be in your newsletter and your weekly church communications and we also ask that anyone who's unable to help in person there's always an opportunity to su supply lunch for those during those setup days so it was seven years ago that my husband Jim died and and he was an avid golf ball scrounger and I still have, oh, about a thousand balls still, including this box I have here, which, include, which has signias of golf balls from around the world, including Spanish Bay, Pebble Beach. And I also have a special ball here that is actually from St. Andrews with tees and ball marks to match. Offers? Offers? <laughs> All right. Now, uh, oh, and there's also a ball from I, um I would ask Donna, do you have something to show? Oh, okay. Well, you'll have to go see it after church then. All right. Okay, so sign up to help out and we all look forward to a hectic next two weeks after that. Thank you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, as I was saying. <laughs> um, also, we have an important announcement from Gloria Krenbrack and the board. The annual general meeting will be on Sunday, May 1st, after the service. It's going to be held in person and on Zoom, so you can attend either way. AGM materials are on the UCM, UC website, including committee reports and the proposed budget. Just click on Church Business when you get to the website, and you will see an option to link to AGM materials. If someone needs a hard copy of the AGM materials, phone Janet at the church office, and she will mail that out to you. So I hope to see you there. Now, I think there are no more announcements. Um, so now we'll get back to the regularly scheduled program. <laughs> the Unitarian Church of Edmonton is a liberal, religious, multi-generational community. We celebrate a rich mosaic of free-thinking, spiritual questing individuals joined in common support and action. We welcome diversity in beliefs, from believers in the divine to humanists, from pagans to atheists and agnostics. We pursue the common good and work for justice. We believe in the compassion of the heart the value of community, and the search for meaning. Whatever your heritage, wherever, whatever your faith, whomever you love, you are welcome here. We gather with gratitude this morning on Treaty 6 land. A treaty is an inheritance, a responsibility, and a relationship. May recognizing our responsibilities as treaty people help to make us good neighbors to one another, good stewards of the land, and good ancestors to all our children. As we begin this special hour together, I invite you to quiet your devices so that we can all enjoy the service, free from the embarrassment that comes with unwanted noises. Uh, we begin with a time of contemplation and music with this prelude provided by Karen Mills and the keyboard in the corner here.
Thank you, Karen. Um, I hope we don't take these preludes for granted. That was a beautiful piece of music and played beautifully. Our opening hymn is a beautiful piece also called One Flame. Those of you online will see the words on your screens. I suppose you can stand if you want to. Uh, those of us here in person can find the music of words on the handout and the words on the screen behind me. If you are in Coriolis or if you just enjoy belting out harmonies, feel free to sing the parts. Please stand as you're willing and able and join us in singing One Flame. turn from singing one flame to lighting our flame. This morning, Karen Mills will light the chalice while I read a selection from our minister, Light is Returning by Kate McPhee. Around us, light is returning. It rekindles the spirit of life in the skeletons of trees. It brings forth new shoots from the soil. It wakes us from our winter slumber and invites us to see what lies beyond. We light this chalice in the spirit of our Earth's awakening and to affirm our commitment to the value of our home. Thank you, Karen. Our next hymn is 188 in the Gray Hymnals. Come, come, whoever you are, Please rise in body and spirit as we sing together hymn 188. Thank you. 
I'd like to call Gordon up, please. Good morning, everyone. This past Friday was Earth Day. Today, we take a moment to celebrate the Earth and give thanks to our Mother Earth with a leaf ritual. You should all have received a green leaf and a pen when you entered the sanctuary. Is there anyone who does not have one? I have my lovely assistant who will assist you with providing you with a leaf and a pen. For those online, you may want to find a paper and a pen so that you can take part in our leaf ritual as well. I ask you this morning to think about the gifts that you have received from Mother Earth. What has she given you that you are grateful for? This could be the gift of a forest that gives you comfort, or even a single tree that inspires you, as certainly was the case with Bryce Missile. Perhaps you'd like to give thanks for a body of water that you sat beside somewhere in the world that soothed your soul. Maybe you have a garden that you tend. You could also give thanks to Mother Earth for something as simple as clean water. Later on in the service, you'll be invited to hang your leaf on our branches. Meanwhile, as you think of what you'd like to write on your leaf, may these words by Carol Lee Jones inspire you. This is an ancient forest. This is a 300-year-old tree that grows in the ancient forest. These are the roots that draw food from the soil to nourish the 300-year-old tree that grows in the ancient forest. These are the tiny underground truffles that grow on the roots that draw food from the soil to nourish the 300-year-old tree that lives in the ancient forest. These are the voles and mice that tunnel and eat the underground truffles that grow on the roots and draw food from the soil to nourish the 300-year-old tree that grows in the ancient forest. This is the owl that flies at night, that hunts voles and mice that tunnel and eat tiny underground truffles that grow on the roots, that draw food from the soil and nourish the 300-year-old tree that grows in the ancient forest. These are the sleepy owlets that feed that are fed by the owl that flies at night, that hunts the voles and mice that tunnel and eat tiny underground truffles that grow on the roots and draw food from the soil to nourish the 300-year-old tree that grows in the ancient forest. This is the hollow in the tree, home of the sleepy owlets that are fed by the owl that flies at night and hunts the voles and mice that tunnel and eat tiny underground truffles that grow on the roots and draw food from the soil that nourishes the 300-year-old tree that grows in the ancient forest. This is the woodpecker searching for ants that started the hollow in the tree, home to the sleepy owlets that are fed by the owl that flies at night, that hunts the voles and mice that tunnel and eat tiny underground truffles that grow on the roots and draw food from the soil that nourishes the 300-year-old tree that grows in the ancient forest. This is the saucy, chattering squirrel that, scro that scolds the woodpecker, searching for ants, that started the hollow in the tree home to the sleepy owlets that are fed by the owl that flies at night, that hunts the voles and mice that tunnel and eat the tiny underground truffles that grow on the roots that draw food from the soil to nourish the 300-year-old tree that grows in the ancient forest. This is the hungry, 
stealthy marten that stalks the saucy, chattering squirrel that scolds the woodpecker searching for ants that started the hollow in the tree, home of the sleepy owlets that are fed by the owl that flies at night, that hunts for voles and mice that tunnel and eat the underground truffles that grow on the roots that, are, that draw food from the soil to nourish the 300-year-old tree that grows in the ancient forest. These are the fir cones that fall from a branch that startle the hungry, stealthy marten that stalks this saucy, chattering squirrel that scolds the woodpecker searching for ants that started the hollow in the tree, home of the sleepy owlets that are fed by the owl that flies at night that hunts the voles and mice that tunnel and eat tiny underground truffles that grow on the roots that draw food from the soil to nourish the 300-year-old tree that lives in the ancient forest. This is the 300-year-old tree that grows from the fir cones that fell from a branch that startled the hungry, stealthy marten that stalks the saucy, chattering squirrel that scolds the woodpecker searching for ants that started the hollow in the tree, home of the sleepy owlets that are fed by the owl that flies at night that hunts the voles and mice that tunnel and eat tiny underground truffles that grow on the roots that draw food from the soil to nourish the 300-year-old tree that grows in the ancient forest. Thank you, Gordon. Our community is entirely self-governing and self-supporting. Generosity, therefore, is one of the spiritual values we recognize as central to our personal and institutional well-being. In addition to supporting this church community, we also make a monthly commitment beyond our walls. One half of the un unidentified cash that is received is given to an outside organization. Some are local, some national, and some international. In addition to supporting this church community, we also make a monthly commitment, excuse me, for the month of April, we are sharing our abundance with the UUUNO, the Unitarian Universalist United Nations Office. From an involvement in drafting the Universal Declaration of Human Rights to leading the Faith Caucus to establish the International Criminal Court, to overcoming UN apathy about sexual orientation and gender identity issues, the Unitarian Universalist Association Office at the United Nations has a long history of providing strong leadership in all aspects of human rights and at a policy level. For those of you in the sanctuary who want to use the envelopes, you can use the envelopes found on the inside cover of your hymn book if you wish to receive a tax receipt at year end. Many of our members and friends make donations monthly or annually through automatic withdrawal from their accounts. An offering plate is located at the exit. Those of us here in the sanctuary may leave a donation at the end of the service. For those of you online, we encourage you to visit the UUUNO website to make a donation. The link is in our April newsletter. Thank you for your generosity. With our time, with our, time our talents, and our money, we support the work of, the of this community and the Unitarian Universalist tradition. Now let us join in singing from you I receive. Our next hymn is 1086 in the Teal Hymnals. 1068 in the Teal Hymnals, Rising Green. This one might be new to many of us, but it has a beautiful melody and lyrics fitting for Earth Day. 
please rise in body and spirit as we sing together 1068. And I think Karen's going to sing it up, <laughs> sing it through. Karen's going to play it through once. <laughs> first time I've been here at the pulpit and to see all your lovely faces. So glad you're here. My name is Reverend Rosemary Morrison and it is my pleasure to serve this congregation. Let's prepare ourselves for a time of meditation. I'm going to read a fabulous poem by Margaret Atwood, Atwood and then we're going to sing a meditation hymn, 1031, filled with loving kindness. It's a metta meditation, a Buddhist metta meditation, but first let's center ourselves, wiggle into your chair, wiggle out the wiggles, take a few deep breaths with me, soften your gaze or close your eyes, whatever is comfortable for you, and of course all of this is by invitation, never by demand. It is up to you how you wish to experience this time. If you wish to feel the f your feet on the floor and your chair, your bed, your couch, the floor supporting you, then lean into it. Let your muscles relax. And focus on your breath for just a couple of breaths. And I'm going to read The Moment by Margaret Atwood. And I'm going to read it twice with a short bit of silence in between. The moment when, after many years of hard work and a long voyage, you stand in the center of your room, house, half acre, square mile, island, country, 
knowing at last how you got there and say, I own this, is the same moment when the trees out unloose their soft arms from around you, the birds take back their language, the cliffs fissure and collapse. The air moves back from you like a wave and you can't breathe. No, they whisper, you own nothing. You were a visitor, time after time, climbing the hill, planting the flag, proclaiming. We never belonged to you. You never found us. It was always the other way around. The Moment by Margaret Atwood. The moment when, after many years of hard work and a long voyage, you stand in the center of your room, house, half acre, square mile, island, country, knowing at last how you got there and say, I own this. That's the same moment when the trees unloose their soft arms from around you, the birds take back their language, the cliffs fissure and collapse, the air moves back from you like a wave and you can't breathe. No, they whisper, you own nothing. You were a visitor time after time, climbing the hill, planting the flag, proclaiming. We never belong to you. You never found us. It was always the other way around. Just take a couple moments of silence. And then we will sing together filled with Loving Kindness, hymn number 1031 in your teal hymn books. And I'm assuming the words will come up, and there they are. Thank you.
is our custom on Sundays and our service, we light candles of joy and concern. In this meditative spirit, what's on your heart? What are the joys that you are carrying? What are the concerns that you have and the sadnesses that you have? I invite you to come and light a candle, line up along this side and grab a taper and light it and douse it, put it in the second basket. Karen will play for us some music as we, as we enjoy, as we uh, experience this beautiful ritual.
and we hold all these things in our hearts. And for Jeff is going to light one last candle for all the joys and concerns that, we, re, that remain in our hearts. And for those candles lit, or those in the chat box, this candle is for you online. And then he's going to light our Ukraine candle as we continue to hold the Ukraine in our hearts. Thank you. The reading this morning is called Other People Are the Path by Kara Jewel Lingo. And she says, soon after I was ordained by Tay, and she means Thich Han, as a novice nun in 1999, I began to have difficulties with an elder sister. The nun had gone through a lot of suffering and could sometimes be harsh in her speech. This was quite painful for me, she says, and I struggled with the situation as a new member of the monastic community. As novices, we were fortunate to have the opportunity to be Tay's attendants when he would come to teach at our hamlet of Plum Village every other week. While Tay needed very little, it is customary in Asian culture for the students to show care for their teacher as a way to learn from them more closely. So two of us novice monks, or nuns, would start by cleaning his room before he arrived and then spend the day with him. Besides helping him, it was a time for Tay to get to know us and guide us in our practice. Somehow he knew I was going through a hard time with this particular sister. In a quiet moment after lunch, while he was gently swinging in his un indoor hammock, where he often liked to rest, he looked up at me and said softly, you know, other people are the path. He didn't say much more, but I received what he was trying to teach me. That our relationships with other people, especially the difficult ones, are the very path, the conditions that help us learn to be more free. Tay often taught us that living in community was like washing a bunch of chopsticks after a meal. You rub them up against one another and they clean each other. The abrasion is painful, but also transformative. His simple teaching that day has stayed with me ever since as an important reminder that learning to work with difficult interactions is the very purpose of the Buddhist path and not some mistake. It is one of the many beautiful and life-changing teachings he offered that I am so grateful for. You know, other people are the path. So if you've been around me at all in the last couple of weeks, you know that I have a pinched sciatic nerve, and it's been with me for about a month now. And I've complained bitterly about it, just so you know. I've whined at every opportunity. And I know how I got it. I normally go for a good long walk at least four times a week. This winter, I was worried about falling on the ice, all that snow and ice and thaw thing. I was just terrified of falling on the ice, even though I had cleats. And, and I didn't go to the gym or the swimming pool because I was worried about getting COVID. Well, that's the excuses. So I didn't exercise hardly at all this winter. And just when it got nice enough to melt all the ice, my back went on me. Well, I'm not looking for sympathy, Yes, I am. I am amused with myself that I am in pain now. Probably worse pain than if I had just fallen or gotten sick. Isn't that true for so many things? We avoid doing the thing because the thought of it makes us uncomfortable. And then something worse happens. 
that something worse could be anything from an unpleasant or heated discussion or losing a connection with a family or friend, family member or a friend. What Thich Nhat Hanh said to that young nun, you know, other people are the path, is an underlying subtext for congregational life. When I say awaken to the magic, what I mean is that being part of a congregation can be transformational, just as Tay said. Just like rubbing two chopsticks together to make them clean, rubbing shoulders with others, working together in the kitchen, on committees, boards, task forces, is where the magic happens. And it can hurt. And it can be hard. And sparks can fly. Unitarian Universalism is a non-creedal faith. No one is going to tell you what to believe or how to express your spiritual path. The point of it all is to be in a covenantal community where we get support on our own path and we learn from each other. The covenant is actually what it makes us safe for us to do the work together. Without a covenant, a blueprint, if you will, we don't know what to do when our metaphorical chopsticks come up against one another. And then we get hurt. Better to avoid in the first place, isn't it? Better to not engage. Don't go deep. Don't speak out about your real thoughts or feelings. And this is the most important one. Better to not let someone know we're upset with them. Of course, if we're upset, we're, we're still going to have to talk about it. We're humans, after all. And so, we talk to others. Well, that's called triangulation. So, for example, if I'm upset about something Jeff here, for example, did, but I didn't talk to him about it, and instead I start talking to Karen and Wendy and Judy about it, I am causing harm to Jeff, to myself, and to this congregation. The congregational body goes off the path because, you know, other people are the path. Living in a covenantal community without a covenant is dangerous. And it will keep the community from growing. Risk-taking is out of the question. Being honest about our feelings is dangerous. And telling someone we are upset with them causes us way too much anxiety. Thinking about all of this, if the Unitarian Church of Edmonton had a covenant of right relations, what might be different? A covenant of right relations says that if you have a problem with someone, go to that person directly. Do not pass go. Do not collect $200. You talk first to that person you're upset with. If that seems too scary, you come and talk to me. Or someone on the board perhaps, and they'll help you talk to that person. If that still causes too much anxiety, you could write the problem out and give it to the person. Again, I would be willing to help you or say someone on the board. If that is still not acceptable, if you are still not willing to go to that person directly in any way, in writing, with support, with someone you trust with you, then according to the covenant, you will need to keep it to yourself and not talk about it with anyone. No triangulation, no gossiping, no talking about two people that aren't part of the congregation because it will get back. Believe me, it will get back. Something's come back to me already from someone not in the congregation. And you know what? That's where the magic happens. All of a sudden, we have a container. 
safety and talking to one another that can work. Of course, it takes practice, and we can do that practice together. And I'd like to tell you that I am just as guilty as anyone else. I can sometimes find myself talking when I shouldn't be. It is human nature, and this is hard, and no one is criticizing anyone. The flip side is if you say or do something that upsets someone, it is up to you to repair the relationship damage. It's called being out of covenant. And there are clearly laid out steps in a covenant of right relations showing us how to get back into that covenant. And so you now know, what is it? Other people are the path. You want to say it with me? Other people are the path. This is where individual and congregational growth happens. This is awakening to the magic. So, if we had such a thing, a covenant of right relations, what are some of the things we could give up? Remember, in order to grow, we have to give up something. We have to make room. What would we no longer have to worry about? I'm going to write them down. What would you no longer have to worry about or do? when we have a covenant of right relations. And if you're on Zoom, please put your ideas into the chat and someone will shout them out to me. So the question is, and hopefully it's not too vague, what do you think would be better if we had a covenant of right relations? What would we be able to give up if we had a covenant of right relations? Any ideas? Anybody want to venture a guess? Or they're all, there's no right answer. It's just ideas. Judy. Gossiping. We don't need to do gossiping anymore. Especially the nasty kind. I agree there. What else? What would we need to give up? What, what do we get to give up when we have a covenant of right relations? Self-pity. Anything else? Anything on the chat? Oh. You, you for hostility? Is that what she said? Hostility? And Sylvia? Bad feelings. Resentment. Guessing who to turn to, is that right? Yeah, that's a good one, yeah. Worrying about being judged. Okay. Bottling up frustrations. I can't write this fast. You get it. When we're, when we're in a community and we don't have a covenant, we don't know what to do. We don't know where to put our feet. We don't know that if there's no plan, if there's no process in place for us to have to say something that's bothering us to someone without fear of recrimination, then we don't, we don't do it. We bottle it up. Is there anything else? That's a big one. People getting mad and leaving the church. Vengeance. Blaming. Old hurts. There's so much. Well, I heard something in poor health. Yep, holding it in, we get poor health. Yep. Anxiety. It is anxiety generating when we're upset with someone or someone's upset with us. We don't know what to do. If we had a road map, we'd know what to do. Okay, I got four things going on. Not my problem. Well, we could be here a long time, and just so you know, we're not getting out of here on time today. Okay, 
Well, we're going to burn these. We're going to let them go. Are you ready? You ready? We got four of them. You can ooh and ah. That's good. That's good. I feel like I'm brownie leader. Whoa! That's called flash paper. It doesn't, it doesn't get hot, and it doesn't have any ash or smoke or scent. And I really love it. <laughs> it only took a month to get here. OK. So all those things are gone now. I watched them go up in flames. And this is not the last time I will be talking about covenant. As we are hoping to have a draft covenant in place by the end of this church year. And I'd like to draw your attention to the chart there and right below me here. The governance implementation team and myself have been working hard on reestablishing the groundwork, the foundational surface structures that hold this community. There it is. Thank you. Without a strong foundation, we aren't able to build. Just imagine if we tried to build a house with no foundation. It just doesn't work. So what are, those con what are those foundational pieces? Their mission, our vision, what we will be. Mission, what work we will do. Our values, our covenant, how we will be together, which is what I've been talking about. Our shared ministry goals, how we will work together. And our mission objectives, how we will know when we're making progress. So between now and the middle of June, we are going to engage in a process with the goal of having a draft mission and vision statements along with a draft covenant of right relations. We are not starting from scratch, my friends, because we are taking all the information from the startup workshops, from the 2016 strategy, strategic plan thing that you did should have written that down. Then, during the Sunday services, there will be a time to gather more information, along with bringing back to you, the congregation, the feedback and information that we've gathered. We want this process to be open, accessible, egalitarian. There will be uh, opportunities to give feedback, even if you're not able to come to church. Information will be in the newsletter. And Louise Carrick, Carrick, I'm sorry, Louise, wherever you are, I've said your name wrong, will be gathering up all your ideas and suggestions and collating them. And then the governance implementation team will be working through them. And so add your voice, add your ideas so that our mission and vision statements truly reflect what UC is, what UCE is, and can become. Awakening to the magic is this, living and working together to build the best congregation we can, learning to communicate effectively, how to be in covenant with one another. I am so grateful for the governance implementation team for working on this big task. They are Louise Carrich, Lynn Turvey, Karen Mills, Audrey Brooks, and myself. And Karen Mills has done our Shaping Our Community, which is what we're calling this, Shaping Our Community, with the UUs in there. So, 
there's a lot of work being done to make sure that we have a strong foundation because we want to build. We want to build not just in numbers, but in health, in vitality, in being in covenant with one another and working together for common goals. And so there are three folks from the governance implementation team. If you don't mind standing, Louise isn't with us today, and we're going to give you a round of applause. Please. Thank you. Sorry to put you on the spot. Not so. Because, you know, people are the path. Say it with me. People are the path. And now, let us return to our Earth Day celebrations. Gordon. It's time to turn our branches into a tree of gratitude for Mother Earth. I trust that you've all written your thoughts and prayers and wishes on your little leaf. And I invite you now to come forward one at a time and hang your leaf on our branch as we do so. We'll enjoy another piece of music by Karen. There seems to be a lot of magic here this morning. We have just turned our branches into a beautiful, living, expressive, loving tree. We have covered them with beautiful leaves on which are written words of love and gratitude to Mother Earth. For those online, you may want to post your note on a prominent place in your home and business. Be reminded of your gifts. We're going to keep our tree here in the sanctuary for a few weeks so that we can remember what we have been grateful for. 
Here is a blessing to the trees by Mara Freeman. Deep peace of the running stream through your roots. Deep peace of the flowing air through your boughs. Deep peace of the shining stars on your leaves. That the harp of the woods may be heard once more throughout the green and living earth. And we'll conclude our little relief ritual with words by Radha Sahar. The whole of planet Earth is a sacred site. All people are the chosen people. And the purpose of our lives is a spiritual one. May we care for each other and for the Earth, for everything relates to everything else. Feeling this oneness, may we radiate the light of love and kindness that all may live in unity and peace. May it be so, blessed be. And as we have given our thanks, so we must sing and give thanks to the earth. And what better hymn to sing than number 1064 in your teal hymn book. Your words should be coming up on your screen. And I invite you to rise in body and spirit as we join in singing hymn number 1064, Blue Boat Home. Thank you, everyone.
Before we extinguish the flame and close the service, I just want to take a moment to recognize everyone who's helped make this service run so smoothly. Our, our pianist and chief flame keeper, Karen Mills, the creator of the service, creators of the service, Reverend Mor Rosemary Morrison and Gordon Ritchie, and I need to talk with Rosemary about what I did wrong, that she upset her. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the maker of the slides, Lynn Turvey. The people who do the tech job upstairs, John Pater, uh, Pauline Atwood, and Andrew Mills. <laughs> the people handling the uh, online work tonight, today are Doug Eastwell and Lynn Wolf. We don't see them here, but they do a lot of work um, online and whomever I missed. Um, so let's proceed to extinguishing the flame. Karen, would you please extinguish the flame while I read a piece by Deanna Smith? As we go forth from the sacred space, may we celebrate Earth and our shared lives. May we recognize our connections to all that is in and on the Earth. May we truly and deeply value the inherent worth of all in this awesome interconnected web of existence. May we commit ourselves to a new way and may we hold our commitments and each other gently but firmly. Yeah, double duty today. <laughs> a benediction by L. R. Nost. It's familiar to you now, I'm sure. Do not be dismayed by the brokenness of the world. All things break, they can break, and all things can be mended. But not with time, as they say, with intention. So I invite you to go and love intentionally. Love extravagantly and love unconditionally for the broken world waits in darkness for the light that is you so go and share it with the world go in peace gentle people go in peace and now I invite you as is our custom to make a bit of a circle and to sing I have a hand up Gerard Gordon, it's your birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. And now we will sing our Linkin song, Carry the Flame. You can be in a circle or not. You can just stay in your seats. It's okay. <laughs> However you like. 